Are you struggling to grow your corals from small frags to mini colonies or larger size colonies? If so, stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel everybody. I've got a great video today. I'm going to be summarizing my recipe or my approach I used on my 90 gallon saltwater aquarium which is shown here to grow coral from small frags to mini colonies and even larger in nearly 12 months time. My goal is to communicate my approach that led to such great success in a short amount of time and then I hope in the comment section we can elaborate, we can ask questions, we can discuss civilly <laughs> uh, other ideas and people's thoughts about how things went for this tank. So before we begin, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. I've got exciting updates coming soon on my Red Sea Reefer G2 build that I hope all of you can tune in and follow me along as I go on that journey. Now a disclaimer first. When thinking of food or dessert, there are many great recipes out there that exist, and they all can be delicious, right? Similarly, when running a reef tank, there are many strategies to growing colorful coral. You can find success using various techniques, some techniques I haven't even tried yet. But the goal of this video is to provide some insight to you all as to what I did to be so successful with this tank, and hope that perhaps some of the tactics I use can be carried over to your tanks to help you boost your rate of coral growth. Now let's get into it. First is lighting. This particular tank that I had was covered by a six bulb T5 light fixture. I ran four ATI blue plus bulbs and two lower Kelvin bulbs, sometimes the aqua blue special, uh, purple plus and the coral plus, and even some older bulbs that they don't carry anymore. I like to have the lower Kelvin bulbs. To, I felt like it promoted growth a little bit better if I could withstand you know, the yellowing of the tank that they um, produced. All my bulbs were on for eight hours per day. The top third of my tank had a par of a range of 250 to 350, and down near the sand bed, I was getting close to 100 par. This amount of lighting worked really well with SPS higher up, and your LPS corals, your softies down low, so a really nice light for a mixed reef. Now I've had metal halide tanks, T5 tanks, and LED tanks, and from my experience, T5 has grown my coral the fastest. It may be due to the blanket amount of light that a T5 fixture provides. You know, I can't be certain, it's just a guess, but that's just what I've observed. Now, aesthetically, I like metal halide the most, which is why I'm using that fixture on my new build, but I have just seen the greatest amount of growth, the fastest amount of growth, especially for SPS corals, using an all T5 fixture. Now the flow in this tank was supported by multiple power heads until I could save up enough money for a couple of e Ecotec MP40s. But the goal of the flow for this tank was always just to be chaotic, broad sweeping and randomized. So I didn't want any power heads with narrow streams of flow. I learned actually from this tank that if you have a power head like that pointed at a coral too closely, it can literally tear off the tissue of that coral. So the flow was adequate enough to keep polyps kind of dancing around, if you will, with the goal of suspending food in the water column so corals could eat, and also suspending those nutrients so that they could be pushed up over the overflow and down into the sump. Now next up is nutrients. This tank had a heavy and healthy fish load. I fed the tank a ton. I think tanks these days are far too clean. In fact, some of my more recent tanks suffered from poor growth and coloration of SPS corals in particular because I didn't have enough fish. Or likely, it may be the advancement that's happened recently in nutrient export technology. So skimmers are getting really, really good. Now what I learned from this tank is whenever I see a little bit of algae, that's a sign not to panic, but actually a sign that my corals are getting what they need to grow. So let that be a guide for you. If your glass is getting dirty every two to three days, I think that's okay and that should be expected. Now for this particular tank, the nutrient export approach was basically a, a skimmer and a refugium full of macroalgae. I'm a firm believer in heavy nutrients going into the tank and then trying to get those nutrients out. 
Now to promote further growth of some of my corals, particularly my Acans, Duncans, various LPS I had in this tank, I would also spot feed them mysis once a week. And this took nearly a five to six head red Acan frag I had picked up to over a hundred heads in a year's time. In addition to that, I also dosed the tank with reefroids once a week to feed my SPS corals. Stability. This tank had a steady alkalinity of close to nine. I never chased a higher or lower number. I dosed two part to keep alkalinity and calcium stable. I also ran my refugium light on a reverse cycle to keep pH swings to a minimum. And I also paid really close attention to temperature stability. I didn't want temperature swings of two or three, four, five degrees happening that were too, too fast, right? To be honest, I actually never tested nitrate or phosphate in this tank. I was just having so much success, I didn't even think or bother with it. However, I will say I was doubling the amount of macroalgae in my sump each week. So I literally was breaking that um, lump of macroalgae or ball, if you will, in half every time I did a water change on a weekly basis. Now speaking of water changes, I have seen many incredible tanks where the owners don't do water changes or they claim to not do them. I personally, I'm a firm believer in a 10% weekly water change. On rare occasions for this particular tank, I would miss that routine. But I noticed a pattern that developed. Every time I did a water change, I typically did them like, I don't know, was it Friday night or something? I would look at the tank when the lights turned on the next day, maybe Saturday evening. And I, I kid you not, I feel like I always notice a small amount of new tip growth on some of the faster growing SPS corals I had. So this motivated me to continue with this schedule. And so I kind of paired that to do, I, I know this isn't causation, but there was an association there I observed that when I did a water change, I noticed a little spurt or a little boost of growth suddenly, from my opinion and from my experience. And so I kept doing that. I kept with that schedule. Now let's talk about your hands. In short, look at your hands and tell yourself, keep my hands out of my tank. I tried really, really hard with this tank to leave it alone, to not move corals around too much. One observation that I've, I had with this tank in particular is if I bumped a coral or actually moved a coral, it seemed to almost go into this stage of hibernation or it became stagnant for like a week. I swear nothing happened with that coral until it was not bothered for at least a week. So let your corals do their thing. If they don't look too natural now, they will. They'll grow in and they'll take up space where they need to take up space and it will become a beautiful, beautiful scene. You'll get faster growth, I believe, if you just leave your corals alone and let them do their thing. Lastly, and perhaps the most important part of this tank's recipe for success was daily observation. I tracked on a daily basis polyp extension, coloration, coral health, and general behavior of every coral in that tank. And this seems maybe a little overwhelming as I talk about it, but you can get pretty good. You can get pretty quick at it, maybe five to 10 minutes a day. And on top of that, I took pictures weekly to track progress so that I could intervene and change my routine if things were not going well. Learning how to recognize when your corals are not happy or about to not be happy is a greatest suggestion I can make to all of you. However, this kind of learning and insight, it's really difficult to teach and obtain. You have to train your eye. So it comes with experience. So that experience gets developed if you do this daily observation. So I would suggest if you can, when time allows each night, go look at your corals. See how the polyp extension is going. See what the coloration is looking like. Use pictures. Is it looking lighter? Is it looking faded? Are they getting darker? Are they browning out? And then you can really adapt and intervene and make changes on the fly to promote continued good growth. And one last bonus insight, it's not really part of the recipe for this tank success, but one really important thing that I learned that I think may save some of you some trouble in the future is don't worry too much about the coloration of your corals when they're small frags and first introduced to your tank. If you worry about color at that early stage where they're small, they're just in your tank a month or two, you'll find yourself, or I did, start chasing numbers, start chasing nutrients, start trying to achieve amazing colors with such small frags. 
you'll find yourself getting into some trouble chasing those numbers and stability goes completely out the window. I have found that coloration of your coral will naturally develop as your frags mature into many colonies and colonies. So in short, if you get good growth, that color will come. Don't chase color, chase the growth, and the rest will take care of itself. Well, that's it. That was the recipe of success that I followed. Clearly, there was a lot more detail I couldn't cover. I wanted to keep this video not too long, but if you have further questions you'd like me to elaborate on, hit me up in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning in. Good luck on your journey from growing those small frags to incredible colonies, and take pictures, document them. Take care, folks. Peace out. Thank you.